Hi. In this slide, I want to uh, describe different uh, types of selling that, that we're aware of in our bigger business environment, and then ask a couple questions. Uh, first of all, if we go into a grocery store, we can sometimes even catch, we can see people who are got a uniform on it and on the back it says free to lay or something and they're doing direct store delivery and they are maintaining a category of products. I mean, you'll see this, for example, in all the uh, fresh local sourced uh, produce uh, and bakery goods and so forth. Somebody is coming in there and, and, and bringing the stuff fresh. Uh, and put it in there. Now, this is a maintenance function. Uh, somebody came in originally and sold the store top down on, hey, you had to put our bread in your five, six, seven, ten stores, and here's how we'll do it and create the system. So what we're really looking at here is a maintenance uh, uh, service kind of person who's out and about. And uh, that would be different than, okay, we're going to actually keep you back at headquarters dialing for dollars uh, in a telemarketing kind of thing. And what we're going to do is give you a product promotion speech. And so you're going to try to find people who've been qualified. You're going to call them up and say, hi there, and here's our little trick to sort of get them on the hook and maybe get them to listen. And for every 25 calls, it's a statistical game. 15 are just going to hang up right away. Another five are going to be ornery before they hang up. And then five are going to hang in there and we can get shame, guilt, a couple into it, and finally one person will listen and we can close on them type of thing. So in this environment, uh, there's a, everything's very measurable. And it's just a statistical kind of cell, and there's a high rejection rate, so you can't take it personally, uh, but most people do. And there's a great attrition rate. The people don't last in this job very long because uh, it's, it's pretty dreary and it's not very big. You know, it, you can figure it out. Um, and those two would contrast to a traditional outside sales rep for a typical distribution company where we're empowering the rep to basically have their kind of their own territory and they're in charge of figuring out their schedule who they're going to call on how often they're going to call on what in theory they proactively might want to choose to uh, sell that day and it could be a, a multi-level conceptual step just to get the customer to say well you know I agree with you on that point that's progress that's moving towards if you can get them to agree on six points then maybe they'll agree to do an experiment and try this particular item and then if they like the item they'll you know throw out the other one and put this one in and so forth um, so uh, but by and large, a lot of what's going on is we're, we're, we're really, we're still doing a maintenance function, like the store, when we're making regular calls to sort of create a rapport, we're saying, is there anything wrong? Can I, can I, can I reactively take care of stuff? Uh, I'm technically qualified. Uh, if anybody has any question about which product to use or how to use the product to get the most benefit from whatever we're, we're offering our portfolio stuff, I can do that. Uh, yes, I, I do some proactive stuff. I mean, sort of every time I go into an account, I have an incremental, uh, how can I move this customer forward, ahead, you know, on to buying something more, upsell, cross-sell, uh, whatever. Um, but it's product-oriented as opposed to when we get to level four, we're crossing over and we're saying it's not about pushing product uh, and getting bigger share by chipping away at this one and that one and so forth, it's about going out and if you want all the chickens, you pick up the hen and the, the chickens all follow. You want to go out and say, look, we have everything you need. The question is, could you buy everything from one supplier and could that supplier sell it to you and through you at a better total supply chain economic than what you currently are enjoying? And, you know, how do we do an analysis and come up with a proposal and tweak and tune that? And then how do we co-install that and co-measure that? There's, there's a chronological process to, to how we might build a better demand pull replenishment system. Um, so there are two parts to that. There's, you know, can I be part of the team that makes that happen? Because maybe we have a senior uh, a person who can access the vice president of supply chain and be, in a sense, our vice president of service value solution to pitch the audit and so forth. And then as sort of a site manager, general manager for that particular customer, I can then go ahead and do the study, the audit, whatever. I can be involved in the co-installing, the co-measuring, all that sort of stuff. The, the installation and creation and getting up to speed and maintenance of a, uh, a, a demand replenishment system. Uh, so the question down here is what percent 
of salespeople can migrate from sort of one, two, three stuff to level four and maybe eventually level five to meet customers' needs in a channel that's matured. So that, you know, it's been years now that, that Sam Walton said, we want supply chain representation. We don't want product-centric sales reps anymore. That was 1988. So it's been a 24-year life cycle to supply chain buying already. And in channels where they flipped and basically uh, end users have said, we're going to give all our business to one distributor and it's going to be on an automated, integrated kind of basis. Think drug wholesale, hospital supply, hardware wholesale, and so forth. In channels that have flipped like that, the survival rate or the transformation rate from three to four has been not great. I'm going to say, you know, give or take a few points, you know, about 10%. It could have been a lot higher, you know, if we were mindful and saw that this was a trend and what was going on and we anticipated the trend and we started to migrate that way and proactively lead from the middle of the channel instead of waiting for big suppliers and big customers to tell us what to do and then be, you know, under the gun and, and, and scrambling and not knowing what to do. It could have been a much higher rate. So that's the question, which is how do we anticipate and scale up and help facilitate and be part of this transformation that's going on in mature consolidating distribution channels. So that's uh, you know the the uh, another sort of little dive into not just mastery for continuous improvement in a, in a given mode of selling, but how do we jump another level to a, a different type of of uh, functionality? Uh, thank you.